Hello everyone, good evening. Welcome to our new series, Quarantine Talks. Due to the recent things that have been going on in our city, uh, we have we wanted to bring you guys some new type of programming uh, to nurture your, uh, your life spiritually. So today, we're gonna have a talk for you guys. We're gonna give a, like a little lesson. So, but before we get started, let me, I wanna introduce my team. So right here on my left, I have Astrid and I have Israel. And on my right, I have Yvonne and Angel. So before we get started, before we move into the lecture, uh, I just want to give a, a, get a quick prayer. Uh, so you could just please bow your heads wherever you are. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to be able to reach each and every one of these young people, wherever they may be in their homes, probably lying in bed. We don't know, Lord, but we thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to be able to reach them through whatever devices that they have that they're watching us through. We ask that you that this topic may re may reach their hearts, may nourish their life spiritually and that let, let it bring peace into their homes, let it bring peace into their mind. And we thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity. And in the name of Jesus, amen. So the first topic we want to get to is anxiety. Due to uh, recent circumstances, it's not a topic that that has come up to us just recently, but I feel like the anxiety or we feel that anxiety is something that young people deal with no matter what age you're in or no matter what's going on around the world. Uh, but we think that anxiety is something that uh, happens not, uh, happens a lot in, the, in young people today. So first off, let's start off by defining anxiety. So what is anxiety? So anxiety is a feeling of fear, worry, nervousness, shyness, or or an ease typically about an imminent event or something with an un uncertain outcome. So guys, before I define this, what did you guys tip uh, primarily think that anxiety was? I thought anxiety, well, it comes with feeling uncertain of things. I, I really anxiety with stress mainly. I think that when one has anxiety, then th that's when the feeling of fear comes along. It's the uh, belief that you have nothing under your control. So before uh, searching or researching the definition of, of anxiety, I, I thought that anxiety had something to do with some type of like stress. And as a college student, or you could probably, uh, if you're at home, you probably could um, relate to this. But when you have a lot of schoolwork, it makes you like, I don't know, that's, I feel like that's like stress kind of ties in with anxiety. To, like there's something that they have in common. And I feel that that ties in with that anxiety ties in with stress. Um, before this, I didn't really know what anxiety it was or is. Um, but now that I kind of looked into it, it's some it's a certain type of fear uh it's a certain type of fear that has to do with not knowing what the future uh for holds for you so so one of the questions we should ask ourselves about anxiety is when does anxiety come into our lives and i feel that it can be circumstantial anxiety can tie with a lot of things that happen in our lives but we identify three main reasons as to why anxiety may enter your is currently in your life or may enter your life in the future. And the first one being when we have no, as as Angel said, when we have no control about what is currently going in our lives. And a great example right now is the coronavirus. This is a pandemic that has hit the entire world and people are fearful they're um worried some might be losing their jobs or lost their jobs already lost homes and they might not have food at the moment and that brings anxiety into our lives death like losing a parent i've i've seen i think everybody can see it all over social media like people have lost family members friends and all of this is something out of control. And of course, it's natural for us to be anxious. Um, another example can be immigration status. Some some parents might be deported or some maybe you, it might not happen to you, but someone that you know, and it's, it's something that happens frequently, especially here in the US. And that's something that can affect our youth. And just thinking about, hey, maybe my family or my friend might not be with me tomorrow is something that can spike up anxiety in our, ourselves. 
Another thing is when things from our past are still affecting our lives today. So I, I'm pretty sure we all have had like a bad relationship or like a bad friendship that has just left us like maybe angry or bitter or just like it can affect us now just thinking oh, I don't want to get into a relationship or another friendship I can't trust someone because and that like brings anxiety into us like and it could even lead us to like just not trust anyone so anxiety can like not just bring like worry or fear like it brings like trust issues too like all of that like ties in and we could even like it could lead us to try to please others like what can I do because I don't want to ruin this again you know and also like we can't we when we are uncertain about the future like that can also lead to anxiety let's say some for some of you who are already maybe looking into wanting to get into a relationship or are already thinking like man I'm getting a little bit older I think I want to get married settle down but that person is still not there like God has not brought you that person that that can bring anxiety because you're just thinking like uh, it's like a ticking time clock right now right and for some of you youth I'm pretty sure all of you can relate because I see it on social media when people are posting, man, um, my graduation got canceled or I'm not going to have a prom this year. And that brings worry. You don't know if you're going to see your friends or maybe that was the last time that they saw their friends in, in high school. And that just like having that thought constantly is how the, also the devil can just like play with like tricks in your minds. And we, for, we disconnect from like, you know, the what the Lord might um, have for our lives but what do you do you guys have any input on any of that no i think you hit everything <laughs> and summed it up pretty nicely okay, okay so we're going to move on to where does anxiety come from our emotions are a cause of anxiety and emotions aren't necessarily a bad thing the problem comes when our emotions are in control of us and we aren't in control of them it is also very important to recognize that anxiety doesn't come from God. 2 Timothy 1.7 tells us, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So God is not giving you the anxiety, but He is offering you that power to overcome it. There are things that naturally create anxiety for us, and that could be anything such as like stress from school, stress from work. And another important factor is that anxiety comes from not having trust in God and not letting him take control of our problems. Exodus 14:14 14, 14 tells us, "The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still." So there's no point in trying to stress ourselves out or going crazy over anxiety because all we have to do is be still and God will take care of that problem for us. So anxiety is not a sin. I mentioned before Anxiety comes naturally. It can be any problem, big or small. But it is a sin when we don't handle it in the correct manners, which would be giving it to God. And anxiety goes against God's word. Matthew, in Matthew chapter 6, he says, do not be anxious three times. So that's a pretty clear sign from God that anxiety is not something that should take a toll on our lives. And what we should be doing with it is as soon as we recognize it, we should deal with it because not dealing with it leads to negative effects such as affecting our relationships, leading us to make unwise decisions. And it slows us down. It divides our brain, our ways of thinking, and it just alters our everyday lives. That's when we go into ways that we can begin to try and overcome our anxiety. Right. So first things first, Take a deep breath. What you need to do is regulate your own mindset. And doing that so is just taking a deep breath, taking it slow, right? And for the people who are living outside of the church, there are, they may have different options like therapy, uh, medications. But the thing is, you're digging yourself a hole that you probably won't even get out because these pills will always be a reminder of the things that you've been through, right? And every time you feel anxious oh pop a pill that might make you feel better but it's a cycle that you're now stuck to now what we this is not a best approach but scientists believe so it is but the thing is like i said it's just a cycle they will be stuck forever now in cognitive behavioral therapy is a short-term goal-oriented psychotherapy treatment that takes a hands-on practical approach to a problem solving the key word there is short term however 
Now, we're trying to look at the long term. And how do you do that? You, you, you do that by going through God. God will always be there forever. And first of all, God is not asking to pay up a large amount of money for, for services. No, prayer could be done anywhere at any time and it's for free. God will give you the answers to your problems no matter what age you are. Well, no matter what age you are, where you are, right? And coming to church is key here, right? First of all, you're surrounded by people who also have problems, so you're not the only one. There's others. You can always seek help. Uh, asking a friend who is probably more level-headed, and that's what you need, someone who, who is there to help you, someone to guide you. You can start by, by a friend, but if let's say you have social anxiety, God could be your friend. He will always be there for you. And also to add on to what he was saying, so Angel kind of explained some secular ways to overcome our anxiety, which is kind of like the solutions that society offers us. For example, it can offer us um, drugs, alcohol. That is what some people turn to when they, they don't know what to do anymore. For example, some, some drugs that they take um, relax them temporarily. But like he said, you guys are just digging a bigger hole. And the more you become dependent on these things, the more anxious you're gonna be feeling when you don't have these things. And unfortunately, like he said, these are just temporary fixes. And like Angel said, there are, there's a permanent and an eternal solution, which is God. And so some biblical ways to overcome anxiety is through prayer. And the Bible tells us in Philippians 4, 6, don't worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything. You need always give thanks for what you have. And so many times there are things that, for example, that we really want or that just seem out of our reach. And yeah, we are limited by our humanity, the, that we can always find answers to problems that we have or questions that we have. And th this is where anxiety becomes a problem because you have a need and you can't answer it. That is when we begin to turn to prayer. Prayer is just speaking to God and just talking to him. And it's also asking God for what you need. And God is not, he's a merciful God. He's a just God. He's a God who loves us. And he's not gonna just sit there and watch you suffer because another way that we can overcome our anxiety is by trusting in God. We can't just tell him what we want and expect for him to give it to us. By praying and trusting in God, that is when God begins to answer our problems and offer a solution. Um, because God is God, you know, he can do anything he wants. He is our father and God will never put you through a situation that you can overcome because that is one of the reasons that we have these problems is like you think like, okay, if God is so almighty, why doesn't he just get rid of this problem? Why can't he just fix my relationship with my parents? Why can't he just fix my parents' relationships? Or why can't he just heal me right now if that's what I need? If he is my father and he loves me, why can't he help me? And the answer is he can help you. But sometimes he puts us through these situations because he knows that we will be able to overcome them. And a way we can overcome them is through the word. And by putting our troubles in God's hands, that's how we can overcome this. In 1 Peter, he says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And this is true. God will never put you through a situation that you can't overcome. And, you know, shout out to the Dalai Lama for this, but he has a saying that <laughs> it says, you don't laugh at the same joke more than once. You know, if you hear the same joke over and over, you're kind of going to get over it. So why do you keep crying over the same problem over and over? This is something that you can get over. It's not something that you should get used to. You shouldn't get used to having problems. Everyone's always going to have problems, but you shouldn't always deal with the same problems because that is when anxiety begins to take over our lives. And that is some biblical ways that we can overcome our anxiety. So one of the last ways to overcome anxiety, uh, according to the Bible, is uh, also having a support group. Uh, I know we have, uh, we kind of touched on it a bit before, I think Angel covered it. So to have some sort of uh, support group or some sort of uh, people that you could like have a, have people that you could talk to or that you could relate to that just like coming to church is important, you know, because we have a congregation, we have people that we connect to because they probably been through the same things. Uh, having a support group is really important. Uh, the Bible says in First Thessalonians 5.11, the New International Version, Therefore, encourage one another to build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Uh, another scripture that also kind of goes on this is Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, also the New International Version. Two are better than one because they have good return for their labor. If either of them falls, if either of, if either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. So according to these two scriptures that we just read, 
or the, uh, the Bible is telling us that if our neighbor is down or our neighbor, our neighbor is going through certain things, that it's important for us to not to help them. It's important for us to be that shoulder that they could uh, rely on when they're down. You know, give them a hand when they're when they're up, like on the floor or when they feel uh, super down, like. I think everybody's been th uh, been through this, or you probably could relate. You know, you've probably been through certain things in life, and you always have that one friend to that you could go to that you could talk about certain things. And I feel that that's really important because, yeah, because that's who. Thank you, because that's who God is. God is that support group. He is that person that you could go to in the midst of you know, in the midst of anything that you may be through that's uh negative that uh so you probably could be going through some probably some some dark times and god is well god is that prime primary support group but it's also important to have you know a, a support group like here at church you know we, we established a couple of groups we established group uh to help uh you know guide you um, we have not only us, but we have a couple of leaders. We have our pastors, you know, we have that support system that we need in order for us to, you know, go through, uh, you know, this uh, to go through anxiety or these times of anxiety. So that's why we also have youth nights. Youth nights are also a great support group because we have people here that that could help you out. Um, we have people that are probably older than you that you could probably talk to. I don't know if you guys have any. Yeah, I have something to add. Also, um, like he says, having a support group is very important, but also the people that you have as a support group is very important because if you just have, you know, it's, it's okay to have friends from school and stuff, but also you need somebody that has a little bit more wisdom than you do. You can't go asking usually people that are younger than you or less mature than you for advice because usually that advice is not going to be the best advice. Um, so usually trying to listen to people that are wiser than you uh, mainly people that are in church usually have a bit more experience with this because you know they, they can read the word more or pray more or listen to our parents our authorities like our pastors or our cell group leaders or us as well if you have any problems or just going to, to friendship groups going to our youth groups on fridays um no one's perfect we all have our problems it doesn't matter whether you're in church already or you're a visitor this is your first time coming um we all have problems it doesn't matter what your problem is it doesn't matter how embarrassing you might think it is we are all human and this is that's how life is we all have our own problems and that's when we begin to all look to each to look towards each other for advice or if we have any problems that's when we come to god when we need something else i also think this is very important to know because maybe we're not the one who's anxious or experiencing this anxiety maybe it's someone we know so it's really important that we are that support group. If it's someone from school, bring them to youth night once they get started again or send them the link to our videos because we may cover topics that they're struggling through but they can't get out. They're just, you know, holding back because maybe they think someone won't understand them but God can give you that knowledge and that understanding and most importantly, He knows what they're going through. So you can guide them to Him and I think that yeah, awesome. it's very good to know. Okay, so... For me personally, I deal with anxiety uh, and I've actually been clinically like <laughs> diagnosed with anxiety. So I know very like I, I relate a lot to this topic. <laughs> I really do. And it's because I've actually gone to therapy sessions and every time I go like or I have gone, I don't anymore. But in the past, like the first thing I remember when we were discussing this topic, like one of the first things they want to do is like prescribe you antidepressants I never took them but that's one thing that I noticed that they always want to do and I understand like maybe in their mind they might think that it's a way to help you but I feel like if I would have known like hey maybe I should just pray a little, like more or just seek God and put like my anxiety in his hands things would have turned out differently and as Carlos was said youth nights have been a huge help for me like just having someone to talk to can be very therapeutic in a way for me because not it you can't just really go to anybody also I've gone to, you go to your leaders you go to like people in church people who are Christ minded you know and and centered around Christ and they've helped me like some like I still have friends who they like sometimes I'm going through 
a really difficult situation, but God puts that person in my life to send me a song, to send me a link to like a video. And it's exactly what I'm going through. And that's that people God uses any way to talk to his people, to talk to his children. And I am a strong believer of like having friends, having a support group just as youth nights or just even having just a person to talk to. And God will use that person to talk to your life and like edify you. And as the verse said, you know, like if you don't have that one, like pity, pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. And I was in that situation where I was just kind of like, well, where where do I go? And that's when I, I turned to therapy or I turned like I even considered like those antidepressants because I'm just like, I, I don't know where to go when we should be really looking up, you know, to God and, and seeking him. And those people around me that I still have to this day that they still help um, help me. And did anybody else want to? Yeah, I kind of want to add something to that because like earlier we gave examples of some secular ways that we can deal with our anxiety, like therapy and stuff like that. But sometimes, like Yvonne said, these things just don't cut it. That's when we like if therapy didn't work, then we moved on to drugs. If drugs didn't work, we turned to alcohol and other toxic relationships and things like that. But also, let's say like whether you believe in God or not, whether you believe in prayer or not, it is scientifically proven that praying actually reduces your stress by a great amount and you know you can't you, you don't lose anything by trying especially when you're praying to god whether you believe it or not like it, it does something for your life also i want to add um so for a support group like don't expect people to like to to just be there for you but also you be there for someone else you know because as i read in ecclesiastes it says if either of them falls or well, verse 10 says if either of them falls down one can help the other up so like it doesn't matter if it's you or if it's your friend like it like having a support group should go both ways so it's not just when you fall down and you know your neighbor picks you up or your friend picks you up you're you know but let it also be that when someone else falls down you pick them up you help create that uh you like you help motivate them you know to keep on going uh you know no matter if they're going through anxiety or depression or anything but i feel like it should go both ways as well and also, yeah, so that's why when we post these videos, you are going to be able to comment on our videos. So let's say if you are dealing with this or you know somebody that is dealing with this, you can forward the video towards them or you can comment our, in our video. You can DM our Instagram page and this yeah, ask any questions you guys have or if you guys um, think we should improve anything or if you guys recommend any um, future topics that we may talk about, um, you guys can feel free to to comment. Also, if you guys need anyone to talk to, we are always there for you guys. So it's completely anonymous. It's private. You guys can talk to, talk to us and there's absolutely no judgment. We are here for you guys. Yeah. So before we end this video, I just want to close out with a prayer. So if we could just bow your heads. And as Israel said, if you have any questions, you know, we're available. Uh, you can write down in the comments and we'll be able to answer back, you know, with a good answer. So... Yeah, you guys have that open so you guys could please uh bow your head so we could close out so heavenly father we thank you for uh having for letting us having have this conversation we ask that that each person that is watching this video let let their anxiety be there no more let you touch any, each and every one of their hearts may you give them peace may you make them peace-minded may their anxiety be cured not because they're depending on any type of over-the-counter drugs not because they're counting on you know some type of therapy or or you know any type of like drug or alcohol but let let it be because they've they've learned today what they have to do is to be able to conquer that anxiety that they now know how to be able to conquer anything close to anxiety uh let this be nurturing to everyone and that you be able to put this need in their hearts may you be, be able to uh quench this thirst that they probably have to probably get connected to you more to be able to pray uh more may they may they be able to read your word more so that so that they may conquer this anxiety that they're probably going through uh due to whatever reason probably because of this time or because of school or anything lord i ask that you please bless each and every one of our viewers lives may you help them out and that may you keep on blessing them in the name of jesus we thank you amen so thank you guys and stay tuned for more tune in next week. we hope to see you thank next you time